I'm Linda Kidd and I'm here with Dan Hudson in his studio with Susan Vogel, one of our award-winning artists, who's manning the camera for us, handling the camera, I should say. Yes. So, Dan, Hi. how are you? Hi. Well, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm honored to, to have you ladies here talking to me. Well, this is a gorgeous area. Oak yeah. Park is beautiful. Yeah. How long have you lived here? Oh, lived here since 1995. Oh, wow. Well, in Agora and Oak Park. Where are you from originally? Detroit, Michigan. Wow, that's a difference. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how long have you been painting? Uh, well, painting is, is strange. I was trying to figure out how am I going to explain this. Because I've always been an artist my whole life. And in the sense that I've drawn and drawn, every chance I get, I would draw. Mm -hmm. um, I took art classes all through school. So I don't. I really. Trained. Well, I don't really think that they were teaching me much of anything except it was a place to, to sit and draw and paint. Mm -hmm. um, but I took summer art classes when they were available. Mm -hmm. And then in 1963, and I'm going to be dating myself now, I graduated from high school and my sister was working for General Motors Photographic and Printing. Now, all three of the automotive companies had graphic arts divisions. Uh -huh. So my, sis my sister was working as in the personnel office and she managed to get me in right out of high school. Wow. Uh, because the funny thing about it was you're supposed to have a BA mm -hmm. to work there. And so of course since she knew people she got me in and as a freelancer. Uh -huh. So I think it was like a month after I graduated from high school I was working there what were you doing there? Well, production art, or at that time I would call it pay stuff. Uh huh. They had manuals uh, in these um, divisions that they would have the car companies. It was all intercompany material. It really wasn't meant for outside. But these were seven-story buildings. That that's all they did. Uh huh. So it was a lot of pay stuff, and and I still remember to this day when I'd walk when I walked into that art department, I could smell. Two smells. One was, if you're familiar with graphic arts, is called rubula, uh -huh. which is a film that they use in the photographic process. And the other was, I would smell this uh, cherry pipe tobacco. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody smoked Oh my pipes. gosh, those days, yes. But it was, a, it was an aroma that yeah. it captivated you. That's and to me, that was like cemented the, uh, the art world in my, in my head. Yes. How did you go from there to uh, painting? Well, uh, from there I, I went through um, Ford Motor Company and it was still, uh, everything I was doing was graphics and uh, visual arts. Mm -hmm. No painting or anything like that. But I did work around illustrators. They had really good illustrators for painting pictures and stuff like that. So I was, I loved it because I was next to, I couldn't earn a living doing it, but I was next to You're somebody. Right, yeah who was, you know. And uh, so I stayed in graphic arts. I came out to California. I got a job at Max Factor in their package design department and I became an art director there. Cool. Then I started my own business in Hollywood and I was servicing uh, other art studios, record company studios, um, package design. I got to meet a lot of illustrators mm -hmm. because um, we were a service bureau so the, uh, the famous illustrators that would do all these record album covers would bring us artwork and then we'd photograph it uh, for the printer uh -huh. and I learned how illustrators worked and this is, this is so amazing. They would sit with the art directors of the record companies uh -huh. and they would work out their concept on tissue. Uh -huh. on vellum. Interesting. And they would go have a meeting with the art director and they would cut with scissors, they'd be cutting things and moving them and taping them in position and by the time they got an approval for the layout, this was just a big dirty mess and they would bring it to us and we would photograph it as a, as a, in black and white and we would make a print that was 10%. In other words, you could barely see what was going on, and we'd dry mount it to a board, and then the illustrators would start painting right on that. And it was like painting a coloring book. No, Everything. this is a good time, I think, for you to show us your studio. Okay. Okay? Yes. 
Tell us which are your favorite paintings and your latest paintings. Well, the top the top two rows here are the paintings I just finished, and they are all of Agora Hills and Oak Park. And uh, I decided to take up painting as a serious effort about mm -hmm. three years ago. Oh, really? That's all? Wow. Well, I did a session 30 years ago, but it wasn't organized. Uh huh. So this time around, since I'm getting up there in years, I told my children, I've got to get serious. If I'm going to be an artist, I better get going. Yeah. So I decided to pick uh, Gore Hills. I took scenery shots of areas that I thought might be endangered. Oh, that's lovely. And uh, would work on those. Mm -hmm. And I needed a discipline. Discipline meaning I needed a series of work to do. Each one, I, I said, each one has to be more difficult than the one before it. Uh-huh. And I have to keep learning and, and pushing myself to do it. Now, is this oil? These are all oil. Uh-huh. Why do you use oil versus acrylic? Uh, I had never used oil before. Uh-huh. I did acrylics 30 years ago when I was fooling around with some experimenting. But uh, I don't know why. I, was, I always wanted to do an oil, but mm -hmm. I just never did. Never did. So I said, I'm going to do oil. And I went online and found an English landscape artist who offers classes. Uh-huh. And I took them, and they were short classes, wow. maybe six hours long. Uh huh. And I learned enough technique to where it gave me some encouragement that I could do this. How do you start a painting? How do I start it? Well, uh -huh. first, I do all my uh, research in photography. I take pictures, mm -hmm. dozens of pictures, different times of the day, <clears throat> and I'll narrow in on a scene, and I'll try to get the photograph to where it's everything I want it to be, then I come back here and I blow it up. So you work on your composition in the photograph. In itself. the photograph, okay, yeah. Great. I don't want to be doing it on the, on the artboard. Right, okay. So then should you blow it up? Yeah, I've got one here I can drag out. Okay. Okay. Okay, so what I do is I want to, I want to make it actual size. Mm -hmm. And I'll literally tape it on the wall and I'll look at it for a couple of weeks. Hmm. And I'll ask myself, do you really want to do this? Uh -huh. <laughs> because I'm, I want to do it as photorealistic as I can. Uh huh. Okay. So once I'm convinced that yeah, I want to do it, you're ready to tackle and, it, and I can do it. Uh -huh. Then then I proceed. And what I'll do is I'll take a tissue and I'll trace certain certain sections of it and transfer the, the tissue to the board. Uh huh. Because again, I don't want to so get out. Do you use wood? Uh, these are all canvas. Actually, every one of them is canvas. Now, what you're seeing here, these aren't the originals. The originals are hanging in the frame gallery. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, the six. There's six of them hanging down there. Cool. And these are prints that we we made. So, like she clays. Uh, well, no, they're uh, canvas, printed on canvas. Uh huh. As a test, I was testing to to see how they'd come out. And actually, in each one of these, that there are certain flaws in here that I've corrected. In terms of color? Yeah. Uh -huh. This has got too much magenta, mm -hmm. whatnot. Um, anyhow, they are all on canvas at this point. The painting on my board here is the first one I've tried on a, on a panel. Uh I believe it's, uh, I think they call it ID, is it IDF or IDM? MDF. 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 Okay. Wow, really? So is it slick on this side? And they were on both sides, it was slick. So wow. what I did is I gessoed both sides uh -huh. huh. and I sanded it down mm -hmm. so I could get it as smooth as I could. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I realized after all these canvas paintings I've done, one of the problems is getting a lot of sharp detail uh -huh. on canvas. Yes, because of the texture of the canvas. Yeah. yeah. So I thought, I wonder if I can improve it with a board. Uh -huh. you know. Well, I love the, the uh, colors in here. Yeah, that was, uh, I was sitting out in the backyard and it was, the sun had gone down, but it was still hitting the tops of those trees. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought, well, that's so interesting. I'm going to see if I can capture that. Yeah, it's lovely. And, uh, yeah, I really like it. Very nice. Yeah. So you have a, won awards? Uh, this one took first place in the Westlake show. Uh huh. And the one up there took an honorable mention. But every one of them were done during when it was just digital. You know, I mean, it was... Uh, yeah, it's not a live show. So yeah. I've never had a chance to hang them and show them in oh. a show. 
Well, you're coming to that chance. We're getting yeah. there soon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to try to work on a new one for that show. Are you a member of any other uh, club? No, just the Westlake. So you show at the Guild, and then you also show at this frame shop? Well, the lady that, uh, Elisa, at the frame gallery, I had her frame all my paintings. Where is that? It's right down here next to the Agora Deli. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's like two doors away from the Agora Deli. Oh, that's lovely. And um, when I was fi when she finished framing them, she said, would you be interested to hang them, some of these in the store here? And I said, of course. You know. mm -hmm. So that's the only other exposure. I did build a website where I have them. But the web, I don't believe the website's hitting any search engines or anything like that. It's just a place I can tell people if you go to my website, yeah. you can see my paintings. What is your website address? Uh, danhudson.us. Okay, good. So people can know how to get a hold of you. Yeah. Show us your, your tools and your palette. And... All right. Well, when I'm working on these paintings here, uh, I had a friend give me a bunch of art equipment. Okay, and I didn't have any place to put it, so I stack it up here. But when I'm working on these paintings, I literally use, these are the brushes that I use. And I had such a hard time with the fellow that does the classes. Rosemary makes the brushes for him. Oh, is that and right? So it's like a rosemary brush. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you on? <laughs> okay. So what I've learned is uh, the fine brushes, I get so, I went out and spent a fortune on fine brushes. And no matter how much I paid for any of them, they don't. They don't up. last, yeah. That fine point doesn't hold up well. So I resign myself that before I start each painting, I'm going to buy five or six new ones. Uh huh. And I'll go through those whole five or six during the course of the painting. Now, isn't this, aren't these sable? Uh, you know, that's an embarrassing. I don't even know. Yeah, I think they are. They're, so they're soft. Yeah. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. So I, I mean, I use a rigor brush and I use a fine point. I'll use these. Uh, what he calls Series 7 brushes. I, I use these when I uh, block in. Oh, I was going to tell you how I do the painting. Yeah, right. When I transfer the uh, tracing, some of the uh, elements to the board, uh -huh. then I, I block in color with this. Okay. Do you do it in terms of value or just color? Uh, value. Uh -huh. and, and I'm just following his suggestion. I, and I've had to wrestle with this because I never used to do this. But he, he, he says, do the whole thing. Block in the whole thing uh -huh. at 50%, not 50%, but medium values. Uh -huh. So if I have three shades of green in here, pick the middle the, the middle one uh -huh. and use that. Because what I'll be doing as I finish the painting is I'm going to be adding dark, and, dark. and I'm going to be adding light. Mm -hmm. So back and forth, back and mm -hmm. forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. so well, that's good because then you have a sense of how light you can, need to go and how dark you can. Need yeah. to go if you got your middle in. Now he always said in the classes he said he doesn't like to see any white mm -hmm. as he's painting. He like he thinks it throws off the what you're doing. So really? huh. I don't know if I subscribe to that or not. Mm -hmm. But uh, interesting. I so think, has anybody else influenced your work besides um, this teacher? Uh, what is his name? Uh, his name is Michael James Smith. Uh -huh. I, I always want to flip his name around. Uh -huh. Michael James, he's really, he's a, he's a, a realist, a photorealist landscape painter. And his work, you cannot tell the difference between a photograph and what he does. Interesting. <clears throat> and what I've learned from him is just simple techniques, mm -hmm. which allowed me, you know, when I used to paint before, like, I don't know, am I gonna... uh, this is how I would paint before. I would copy photographs that I would find. Uh -huh. in magazines usually. Uh -huh. They're all small. but it, And I really just went from top to bottom and until I was done, and that was it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I didn't know what to do, I would just do a lot of what, what we call impressionistic work uh -huh. because I didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to finish it off. Yeah. And where I could put in detail, I would, but oftentimes I didn't know. You know, I'd try and go, this isn't working. So... Now that I, I've been following him, I can go in and I'll have a large area and I can say, oh, okay, this is going to take a while, but I know uh -huh. how to do it. Yes. Yeah. Do you have any goal for your work? Do you want to stay in the realistic <coughs> style? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I've, I've thought about the other, you know, going back to this. Uh -huh. 
Like, I'll give you an idea. Am I going to? No, you're good. Yeah. Um, when I was doing this, I have every rock, a piece of gravel, <coughs> excuse me, in here. Wow. But, <laughs> but here, mm -hmm. I did more of an impressionist. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's really what I'd like, is where it's designed to, where there is detail. Combination of both. And then there is. I love that. Yeah, I love that. I think that's very good. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so, I mean, I got, well, that's, that's probably pretty realistic there, but it was, it was fun doing this section here. Mm -hmm. I had to do that road three times. Because of the perspective? No, because of the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> to, well, How I... How did you feel about rocks when you finished that? <laughs> well, you know, I learned something in my graphic arts mm -hmm. career. Uh -huh. If something's not right... It's not right. Okay, wait, it's it isn't right. It's not right. And it's no matter, driving you crazy. No matter how much you try to talk yourself into the fact you think it's right, it's not. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I, I would look at it and I'd go, you know, every time I look at that painting, I'm going to look at that road and I'm going to get really upset that the road doesn't look right. Yeah. So I just toughed it up and I would literally white out the whole road and start over. I wouldn't start right then. I'd white it out, and I'd have to wait, let the paint dry, which allowed my uh, my emotional then state you could deep breathe and <laughs> <laughs> to calm down. Right. And I'd say, oh, "Okay, get a good night's sleep, get up, and go uh, for it." You know. That's great. So, did you do this full time? No, no, I work. Um, I was just Oops. telling Susan. Ew, what is? Um, I work at Do It Center. Uh huh. I, well, this is part of the story of me. In 2015, I said, I'm going to get out of graphic arts. I'm tired of all the technology and everything else. And I told Kay, I said, I'm going to go get a job in a retail store and be a teenager and listen to rock and roll music <laughs> and take life easy. And I'm going to try to paint. Uh -huh. So Sorry. I went over to Do It Center and they put me in the nursery. <laughs> and right away the nursery was terrible. And I said, I gotta clean this thing up, you know. So then they made me the head of the nursery. <laughs> so I was I was right back to Took I wasn't responsibility. Well gra the graphic arts thing, you know, you're you're burnt you have to uh, recreate the wheel every day mm -hmm. when you're working on websites. It just makes your head split in half. Mm. I took forty five classes and and it would be the laughing stock because the last class I took was a week ago. And I wasn't on top of everything, you know. So oh, too, too many changes yeah. too quickly, yeah. So in that sense, Do It Center is fine. I meet a lot of wonderful people there. That's great. And help a lot of people with gardening and stuff. But what I'm going to do now, I, I, I told them at work, I'd like to be <clears throat> out of there by April. Because I'm getting up there and I want to paint. Very good. So that's your goal, is yeah. to full-time paint. Yeah. Well, Dan, your work is amazing. I can't wait to see you in the gallery in person. Oh. That will be very fun. Yeah. yeah. Thank that, you so much for showing us. Now, baby, when you sigh, when you sigh I want to sigh with you. When you cry, when you cry.